Hey class, so for this exercise, we'll be using the flower sack rig by Joe Daniels. It's from 2013, but it is a timeless rig. It's available for free from Gumroad, and I'll put the link below. It's fantastic. Okay, so once you've downloaded it, put it somewhere safe, and then we can create a reference. Notice that the flower sack rig comes in a project folder, which also contains our source images and scenes. So the scene we want is the flower sack and that's where our rig is and then we'll be connecting the textures from the source images folder to it so you can see um, right away it doesn't have any textures on it just yet so let's go to our hyper shade editor so we can um, turn those on and go to the jd flower sack shader so you can see there's a bunch of different material properties. Under color, you want this tiny little arrow connection node. And under image name, click on this little folder icon and go to wherever you put your flower sack. And in source images, you will find textures and the color. So let's grab that color. And basically we're just relinking the nodes for this. So now we also want to update our bump map. So we're gonna click on that and the folder, navigate back to our source images folder and our textures, and this time pick the NRM for normal. Great. All right, so now this is all nice and updated and we can close this out and then um, to turn on what the textures look like in your um, window, just click that little texture button all right, and I'm just gonna turn it off to get my um, computer to be running a little better. Then I'm gonna create a plane. We're just gonna set up the scene really fast. Um, so just like before, I'm gonna set up a whole sweep. And let's move this back a little bit. And then I'm gonna use my modeling toolkit and my edge selection and just grab so double click on all of these different edges, except for the last one. The last one, if you double click it, it will highlight all the way around. So you have to press shift and individually click all of those edges. Once it's done, I'm going to use my rotate and my pivot point move tool. So I'm holding down D to move my pivot points and then just rotating these. To deselect an edge, I'm holding down control and double clicking on it then D to move the pivot point again, rotate a little more, control, double click to deselect an edge, and then I can just rotate. There we go. Undo that. All right, so now when I press three to smooth this out, I've got a really nice sweep that will have kind of a no harsh edges in the background. Then I'm going to go to Create and Lights and create a spotlight. This will be shined on the backdrop right behind my object. And I'm just going to rotate it into place. I'm speeding this part up quite a bit um, because we've done it before. The key is to have a high intensity, so like a thousand for the spotlight. The drop off controls the fall off of the edge of the light, so whether it's soft or not. Next, I'm going to go to Arnold Lights and create an AI Skydome light. I turned the intensity to 0.8. Um, it'll give us the overall lighting in the scene. And now I'm just going to select my background, assign a new material to it. This time I'm going to use an AI standard surface. And the first thing I'm going to do is turn down the specular. We do not want this to be shiny. So the specular weight is how much shininess it has. So you want to crank that all the way to zero change the base color and now we can render. So we can either use the Arnold render view or the IPR button that we've been using before. With the Arnold render view, you do need to turn on the IPR. So you know, it's six of one, half a dozen of the other. And you can tell that my scene is pretty well lit. Um, it would be nice if I could, I'm gonna turn down the sky dome light itself so turn that to 0.5 and then turn the spotlight intensity up to 10,000. The lights that are made by Arnold, um, the AI Sky Dome requires a much lower intensity than the lights made by Maya, the spotlight, and now 
an area light, um, they require 1,000, 10,000, depending on um, the light and the scene that you have. Okay, so I just made an area light and I'm scaling this one up. So this is a big square and it has kind of a pointer that points at the direction um, that the light is going to be emitting. It's a really nice light, um, just a general all over light. Um, so let's take a look. I'm going to move it back just a tiny bit so um, you can't see the edge of the light in the scene. We want to put all of these elements, so the light, the other light, the backdrop onto their own layer. So create a layer from selected and um, just call this lights. And we're gonna keep them visible, but turn them into reference so we're not clicking on them constantly. And we can focus on our rig. Okay, so um, this is our rig and these are our controls. The main control is this ground control with the arrows. Now this is the one rig where it is okay to use it for major movement in your scene. And in fact, it's the only way that you're gonna be able to get your rig to move around the scene. So unlike other rigs where you just use this once and leave it behind, this one we're actually going to keep and use. Okay, I'm just going to zero out these transformations and let's talk about the rest of the rig. So the main control that you're going to start with, first by positioning on the ground, and then the second is this big barrel control for the waist. So this functions in a couple ways. It has a bit of squash and stretch. It has some forward and backwards motion. It also has some good rotation that you can use as the hips. So you're gonna wanna use that control first to um, kind of set where you want the hips to be. The next control that you're gonna wanna use is the top kind of barrel control, this yellow one. And this will control the positioning of say, you know, the equivalent of shoulders and rib cage. It also has a bit of squash and stretch to it and you can position it forward and back. So after you position these two, so start with the bottom, move to this one, and then you can move to this central control, which will allow you to kind of reorganize the weight of the rig. So pushing it to the top or to the bottom so two hips and then the center. All right, now the legs and the feet work in kind of interesting ways, or the legs and the arms. So for these, you can actually move them forward and back. You can rotate them as well. So if you're trying to kind of push forward and push back, you'll wanna do a combination of move and rotate. And then each of these kind of feed off of each other. So they're, the top one is the parent to the rest. And then you can um, rotate these ones. And the last one is just for kind of positioning. I think this second to last one is kind of a very important one. Okay, and then we have the shoulders. So the shoulders can also kind of rotate forward and back. You can wave back and forth and then um, work with the main control for the shoulder and then use the um, additional controls to add curvature. And then finally, there is one more kind of squash and stretch for the top here, like the head portion of the flower sack. So you can use that to adjust and I think there's one more at the bottom as well. So if you want to move the butt up and down, that's great. All right, so I'm going to quickly do a couple of different poses. So for your assignment, you have three different poses to do. And um, for those poses, we always want to make a shot cam. So let's set that up. And um, so create a camera from view and call it shot cam. And then if you want to use some um, 
in image plane, so just view image plane, import image for your reference images. So I definitely did some sketching for this one. I definitely relied on um, some reference that I found online, but I did do this. You will want to have some sort of reference in order to um, make your poses. All right. So I'm going to speed this up quite a bit while I'm doing my posing. I'm just working straight from those hips, posing them first, then the chest, then the legs, and then finally working up to the arms and the head area. Make sure your pose looks good from all angles. Once you're ready to render, you're gonna to go to show and turn off NURBS curves, hit the IPR button, and then I'm going to render settings, making sure that it's going to save as a JPEG and HD 1080. Then render, render, and render the shot camera or your current camera. Once it's all done, uh, make sure you're hitting save image and um, please turn in three of your um, images. All right, thanks and have fun with this exercise.